Okay, everyone, I am going to document my second attempt at germanium ultramarine. This is a formulation from Atomistry. They do not even give me proportions of the reagents, just which ones go into it. So we have germanium dioxide that I made for myself from elemental germanium. Very nice. Um, sulfur and sodium carbonate. It says those three things are melted together. It doesn't say for how long, but sodium carbonate, for that to melt, you got to get it over a thousand C. So it's going to take some pretty high temps. I suspect very much that it needs to stay at these high temps for a prolonged period of time. And I've only got one tank of propane. But we're going to give it a shot. I mean, what do we got to lose, right? Okay, this is an update on the germanium ultramarine experiment. Um, the only blue I'm getting right now is right around the edge of the mass at the bottom. You can barely see it. I really hope it is showing up. There is a blue color there. Okay, so basically what I did was I took the mixture of germanium dioxide, um, sodium carbonate, and sulfur, and I cooked it over the micro burner um, with it on low, but with the crucible down in the flame. I mean, it was good and down in the flame. So it cooked at a pretty good temperature for a, a couple hours. I added a little bit more sulfur to it, two extra scoops of sulfur, and let that all burn away, basically. Um, it was a clear reddish compound over last night when I set it, and um, almost like a reddish kind of glass that had a dark spot in it. This morning, um, it had completely become hygroscopic, and as it absorbs water, it gets dark. It's not blue exactly it is more like a really dark kind of bluish gray almost um, you can see there's a dark spot in there now I don't know if it's absorbing water again or not um, I don't know it, it, we are getting a nice red out of it that's kind of cool um, there's no sulfur smell when you heat it up um, I, mean, I don't think there's excess sulfur in there so we, we've definitely got an interesting something in there. I think it needs to be, based on how silicon ultramarine is made, I think it needs to heat. Um, usually, I think silicon ultramarine, it is baked in a kiln. I can't do that. I don't have a kiln here, more's the pity. But, um... I can try to reheat this with the lid on it, and I mean, I don't have a whole lot of propane left, but I can try to get it good and hot, and we can see what happens. Um, it was, when I just heated it up just now, it was starting to liquefy a little bit, so something's happening. Um, I'm just not sure what. <laughs> I really doubt this video is going to be internet worthy, but it, it's still hot. That is really remarkable, nonetheless. Alright, everybody. I know this probably isn't focusing very well, but as you can see, there. this is the final result of the experiment, and it actually is a bluish-green color. Holy shit. I mean, it's not what I would consider wildly successful, although I don't know what color germanium ultramarine is actually supposed to be. I mean, is it ultramarine because it is made like silicon ultramarine, like classical ultramarine, or is it ultramarine because it's like ultramarine in color? It looks like that's because it's made by the same process. Maybe it is the same color. Nevertheless, just with a mecker burner, I was able to get something that is bluish green in color. And I am pretty goddamn happy with that, given that this was just kind of a throw-it-together, you know, and see-if-it-works experiment. So, there you go, people. 
If you like that, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, you know, whatever. This is science in action. Um, subscribe, comment, share the videos, donate a few bucks if you can, and until the next one, y'all, I'll see you later. That is fucking cool. That is so goddamn cool. That really is. Focus, you piece of shit.